myself dr nandish uh, i'm from krishna vishwavidyapeet my co authors being dr pramod sir and dr amal bhoite i'll be presenting case study of craniopharyngeal craniopharyngeal is a benign uh, neoplasm which is graded as the wh grade 1 They are thought to arise from the epithelial remnants of plasmid spores. They occur in cellular and supracellular regions and can be seen anywhere from the floor of the third ventricle to the pituitary gland. Cellular and supracellular location compromise uh, of 70% and supracellular only 20%. Purely intracellular 10%. The presenting symptoms include signs of uh, increased intracranial pressure, secondary to obstructive hydrocephalus, seen more commonly in children. Visual disturbances or hypothalamic pituitary axis dysfunction may occur, and children may also present with growth failure. Histological findings are comprised of uh, cords of columnar or squamous epithelium with keratin formation. This time with epithelial cells in loose connection tissue or glass stroma may be formed in the tumor. This is very in color and viscosity and may contain cholesterol crystals or MRI. Craniopharyngeal is further divided as adamantinomatous, uh, which is more common in pediatric and papillary more common in adult. So the common findings of the both include adamantino matters they are multilobulated and partially solid mostly cystic whereas papillary they are uh, discreetly encapsulated mass with a smooth margin often solid with a cauliflower like configuration and adamantino matters they are cis often contain uh, dark viscous uh, machinery oil fluid rich in cholesterol crystals the papillary if they contain cis their fluid will be clear unlike the machinery oil type fluid in case of Uh, adamantino matters. The surface of adamantino matters or uh, uh, craniopharyngeal are often irregular and irregular, adhering to the adjacent structures such as hypothalamus. Whereas in case of papillary, it has a smooth surface and does not adhere to the uh, adjacent brain. Calcification is usually present in case of adamantino matters, and calcification is uncommon or rare in case of papillary. And it is seen to give a wet keratin nodules characteristic appearance in case of adamantino matters. Which is absent in papillary. So the study information of the case being a 12-year-old boy who came to our hospital with complaints of headache, blurring of vision since one and a half years. There was no previous history of trauma or any documented evidence of mass vision. No previous imaging studies were available. CT and uh, contrast scan was done for the patient. Coming to the CT findings, a well-defined, multi-lobulated. Solid cystic lesion measuring of 5.8 into 3.2 into 4.1 is noted in the supracellular region. The soft tissue density component of the lesion near the CSF density on this cystic component is seen. We can also note the extensive peripheral and chunky central areas of calcifications. Extensions of the region superiorly. The lesion is causing mass effect on the third ventricle with marked enlargement of the bilateral lateral ventricles with periventricular pores. Inferiorly, the lesion is causing mass effect on the pituitary gland and its caudal displacement. Posteriorly, the lesion is causing effacement of the uh, interpedicular and prepotent systems with mass effect of pons and midbrain with aspirated stenosis causing hydrocephalus. Coming to the MRI findings. A well-defined multilobulated uh, solid cystic lesion is noted in the supracellular region. The solid component of the lesion appears hypo to hypo on T1, and the cystic component shows variable signal intensity with hypo intense to hypo intense on T1. So it appears heterogeneously hyper intense on T2 or plate, and the cystic component appears hyper intense on T2 sections. SWI and phase images they show extensive peripheral chunky central areas of blooming, which is indicative of calcification. Coming to the post contrast uh, section, the solid component uh, shows heterogeneous post contrast enhancement, whereas the cystic component shows peripheral contrast enhancement. Case discussion: A well-defined multilobulated solid cystic lesion is noted in the supracellular region. The lesion shows soft tissue density solid component and CSF density cystic component with calcifications on CT. The solid component of the lesion appears iso to hypo on T1, heterogeneous hyperintense on T2 slate, and shows heterogeneous post contrast enhancement. 
extensive peripheral and chunky central areas of blooming or in the stomach sensitivity of calcifications. The cystic component shows variable signal intensity with hypo intense to iso intense signal on T1, hyper intense on T2, and shows peripheral contrast enhancement. The region is causing mass effect and acute obstructive hypercapsule as described, slightly adenantinomatous uh, cranial pharyngioma. So the differentials being brachius uh, for uh, left cyst on CP, non contrast. It appears typically non calcified and shows homogeneous low attenuation. Uncommonly, it may be of mixed iso to low attenuation or contains small cardinal calcifications in ball. On post contrast images, they typically uh, they are non enhancing, although the cyst ball may enhance in some cases. Coming to the MRI findings, T1 50% are hyper intense and 50% are hyper intense. T2 majority of them are hyper intense. Coming to the post contest, there is no contest enhancement of the cyst screen. However, a thin enhancing brim of the surrounding uh, compressed pituitary tissue may be present. The second differential will be pituitary macroedema. The CT findings of macroedema are usually isodense with a gray matter, but cyst and hemorrhage might be seen. Calcifications are rare and moderate, uh, but heterogeneous enhancement of the macroedema is typical on the CT. MR findings, the macrodemons are usually isoindense with cortex. The posterior pituitary bright spot is absent or displaced into the supradiaphragmatic system on T1 matter. Small cysts and hemorrhages popular are seen. Adenomas are generally isoindense with gray matter on T2. Hyperintensity along with optic pathways on T2 fire occur in 15 to 20 percent of the cases. Hemorrhagic adenomas the bloom on T2 matter. Most of the macrodemons enhance strongly but heterogeneously on contrast. Subtle durus thickening is present in 5 to 10 percent of the cases. The next differential will be hypothermic glioma. On T1, it appears iso intense relative to the brain parenchyma, and on T2, it appears iso intense to hyper intense relative to the brain parenchyma, and it shows homogeneous port contrast enhancement. The next differential will be intracranial epidermoid cyst, which appears uh, hypodense on CT, and on MR. ISO2 was slightly hyper intense compared with CSF on both T1 and T2 weight sequences, and it does not suppress on flare. Hypothalamic hematoma. On T1, it appears ISO intense related to the gray matter, and on T2, it appears hyper intense related to the gray matter, and it does not show any post contrast enhancement. The last potential will be intracranial teratoma. On CT, the majority of the intracranial teratomas they demonstrate at least some fat and some calcification, which is usually solid or Clump like. They usually have cystic or solid components contributing to an irregular outline. Solid components demonstrate variable enhancing. On MRI, T1, it shows cyber intense components due to fat and proteinaceous lipid rich fluid. Intermediate components of soft tissue and the hypo intense components due to calcifications and red products. On contrast, it shows uh, contrast enhancement. T2, it gives a mixed signal. These are the references. Thank you.